Good morning. For this session, we will be tackling the principles behind neoplastic growths as discussed in the first few chapters of Robbins. Uh, we'll also be discussing common terms and must know molecular concepts as they relate to specific tumors and syndromes. Uh, for the second half, we'll be talking about specific tumors in each organ system. So starting off with the first question, this is a genetic disorder of cell growth that is triggered by acquired or less commonly inherited mutations affecting a single cell and its clonal progeny. This is the definition for a neoplasm. What are the two components of tumors? Tumors are generally composed of the, the actual cells that make up the, the mass, which is called the parenchyma, and the surrounding connective tissue known as the stroma. In some tumors, um, both the tumor parenchymal tissue and the stroma can be malignant. In some cases, only the parenchyma or the stromal component is malignant. Tumors that are localized at their site of origin and are generally amenable to surgical removal. These tumors are said to be benign. In contrast, what do you call tumors that invade and destroy adjacent structures and spread to distant sites? These tumors are known to be are known as malignant tumors. What do we call malignant tumors that arise from solid mesenchymal tissue? These tumors are said to be call, are called sarcomas. What do you call tumors that are malignant and are epithelial in origin? These tumors are called carcinomas. What do you call malignant tumors arising from blood-forming cells? These refer to a group of cancers known as leukemias. What do you call benign or malignant tumors that contain recognizable mature or immature elements from more than one germ cell layer. These are called teratomas, and they may be mature or immature, depending on the, pre on the maturity of the component tissues present. These are disorganized masses composed of cells that are natively found in the involved tissue. These are known as hamartomas. These refer to masses composed of heterotopic rests of cells. These are known as choristomas. And in choristomas, um, it is composed of uh, tissues that are not normally found in the areas where they are located, in contrast to uh, hamartomas, where uh, the component tissues are disorganized but are endogenously found within the site where the hamartomas are found. This is a term to mean uh, the extent to which neoplastic cells resemble their corresponding parenchymal cells. Differentiation. Lack of differentiation is known as anaplasia. Variations in cell size and cell shape, pleomorphism. This is the replacement of one cell type with another. This is the definition for metaplasia. And it, this is an adaptive change by which stem cells in a particular site or tissue are reprogrammed to develop into another cell type. This refers to disordered growth in epithelium. This is the definition for dysplasia. Dysplasia typically refers to epithelial linings. So when there is disordered growth of the disordered growth and maturation of epithelial line tissues, particularly particularly in the cervix, in um, 
tube gastrointestinal epithelium, we refer to this as dysplasia. There are two entities which are non-epithelial, which are give uh, which are given the moniker dysplasia. Number one is myelodysplastic syndromes, which again refers to abnormal maturation. There is maturation, but the maturation is abnormal in the cells of the bone marrow. And number two, fibrooceous dysplasia, which is a specific entity uh, found in bone. This is full thickness dysplasia, but is limited to the basement membrane. There is no invasion as of yet of the dysplastic cells. This is the definition of carcinoma in situ. This is a pre-malignant lesion. Uh, when these lesions acquire enough mutations to gain the ability to invade through the basement membrane, these uh, entities become frankly malignant. What property of malignancies is the most reliable discriminator of malignant and benign tumors? Metastasis. This is a spread of a tumor to sites that are physically discontinuous with the primary tumor. This is the definition for metastasis. What are the three pathways of spread of malignancies? The first spread is direct seeding, and you see this primarily within uh, intraperitoneal uh, malignancies, like um, primary malignancies of the ovaries, the tube, uh, the fallopian tube epithelium. You also see this in uh, mucinous carcinomas of the ovaries and the of the ovaries and the colon. Uh, you see another way by which malignancy spread is through lymphatic spread, and this is particularly common among uh, carcinomas or malignancies of epithelial origin as well as melanomas. And the third is hematogenous spread or spread via blood, which is uh, particularly common in sarcomas or malignant tumors of mesenchymal origin. This is a phenomenon whereby ovarian or epithelial mucinous carcinomas fill the entire peritoneal cavity. This is known as pseudomyxoma peritonei. In most cases, uh, the source is usually ovarian in origin, usually arising from mucinous cystadenocarcinomas or mucinous carcinomas of the ovary. What is the most common pathway for the initial dissemination of carcinomas? Carcinomas usually spread through the lymphatics and through lymph nodes. Melanomas also spread through lymph nodes as well. This is the first node in a regional lymphatic basin that receives lymph node flow from the primary tumor. This is known as the sentinel lymph node, and this is important in determining the spread of particular of carcinomas. Uh, we often do this for um, breast carcinomas. We get sentinel lymph nodes. You also see this in melanomas that have spread to the nodes as well. What is the most common mode of spread of sargomas? They, they are usually spread by the blood. How are benign and malignant tumors differentiated from one another? They are differentiated through number one, degree of differentiation, number two, local invasiveness, and number three, distance spread or metastasis. For degree of differentiation, typically, um, Malig the, more, the, mo the more poorly differentiated the tumor is, the more malignant it is. Conversely, the more well differentiated the tumor is, or the more closely it resembles to the original tissue, the better the prognosis. An important exception to this rule are what are known as the translocation sarcomas. The translocation sarcomas refer to a group of entities which would include uh, synovial sarcomas, DFSP or dermatofibroma sarco dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, um, several types of rhabdomyosarcomas, 
where the cells look uh, fairly well differentiated. Uh, they do not exhibit extreme atypia, but the behavior is very aggressive. And translocation sarcomas are typified by um, these translocations, and they're usually found in younger individuals. Again, they are marked by very aggressive behavior, despite the benign-looking uh, morphology or histopathology. Number two is local invasiveness, and you see this in a lot of tumors. Um, you can see tumors that do not necessarily have the propensity to metastasize, but are capable of uh, invasion, local invasion. And of course, number three is distance spread or metastasis. What is the most common cancer in men? Prostatic adenocarcinoma. What is the most common cancer in women? Invasive ductal carcinoma of the breast. This is the cancer which causes the most mortality in both men and women. Lung adenocarcinoma because they usually are found uh, late stage into the course of the in the course of the disease. Asbestos exposure is most associated with what malignancies? Mesothelioma, which is a malignant neoplasm of the mesothelia linings, usually of the pleural cavity, lung, esophage esophageal carcinoma, a cancers of the stomach, and the colon. Vinyl chloride exposure is associated with which malignancy? Angiosarcoma of the liver. What are the hallmarks of cancer? Cancer is typified by eight characteristics. Number one is self-sufficiency in growth signals. Number two is insensitivity to growth inhibitory signals. Number three, altered cellular metabolism. Um, tumor cells, especially malignant cells, display what is known as the Warburg effect or the Warbur Warburg phenomenon, where they switch to where they switch to glycolysis, uh, despite adequate amounts of oxygen and intact ATP synthesizing machinery and oxidative phosphorylation. This, again, this is known as the Warburg effect or, uh, or aerobic glycolysis. Number four is evasion of apoptosis. Number five is limitless replicative potential. Um, tumor cells that grow beyond one or two millimeters have also have the capacity to form their own blood vessels. They have the ability to invade and destroy surrounding connective tissue and basement membrane, and they have the propensity to enter blood vessels and metastasize. They also have the ability to evade the host immune response. This is the ability of tumors to switch to aerobic glycolysis, which enables synthesis of macromolecules and organelles needed for rapid growth. This is known as the Warburg effect. At first, this may seem in, uh, disingenuous in that despite an, despite a, an intact oxidative phosphorylative phosphory, mechanism, um, tumors switch to the less efficient, less, uh, less efficient uh, glycosylysis, which only produces two molecules of ATP in contrast to oxidative phosphorylation. However, uh, when glycolysis is used, uh, other byproducts are actually produced uh, in glycolysis are actually used by the tumor cells to produce macromolecules needed for the replication of other cells. And these would include nucleic acids and proteins. So that is why um, it's, uh, malignant tumors have the propensity to use um, energy synthesizing mechanisms that, although produce lower amounts of ATP, will actually help them uh, in producing newer cells. 
These are mutated genes that cause excessive cell growth free from influence of growth factors and other external agents. These are known as oncogenes. These are normal cellular genes whose products promote cellular proliferation. These are known as proto-oncogenes, and proto-oncogenes are normal. It is only when they acquire mutations that they become oncogenes and become dysregulated. This leads to increased proliferative capacity of the tumor cells. This is a protein product encoded by an oncogene that drives increased cancer cell proliferation. These are known as oncoproteins. What do you call genes that regulate cell proliferation? These are known as tumor suppressor genes. This states that two mutations involving both alleles of a tumor suppressor gene is required to produce a neoplastic growth. This is the central tenet behind Knudson's two-hit two -hit hypothesis. This is the active form of our, the retinoblastoma gene that exerts anti-proliferative effects. The RB gene occurs in two forms. When it occurs in the hypophosphorylated form, this is said to be the active form and drives cellular proliferation. This is the central monitor of stress in the cell that can be activated by anoxia, inappropriate signaling by mutated oncoproteins, or DNA damage. This controls the expression and activity of proteins involved in cell cycle arrest, DNA repair, cellular senescence, and apoptosis. This is controlled by the P53 uh, protein encoded by the TP53 gene. This is known as the guardian of the genome. This is a tumor suppressor gene that degrades beta-catenin and promotes growth of colonic epithelium. This is what is mutated in familial adenomatous polyposis. This is known as the APC or the adenomatous polyposis coli gene. This is a cell adhesion molecule that plays an important role in contact-mediated growth inhibition of epithelial cells associated with gastric and lobular breast carcinoma. This is the E cadherin molecule. Cadherins are cell adhesion molecules and they are responsible for uh, the integrity of the epithelial lining or the junction between uh, epithelial cells. When there is a loss of function of the ecadirin gene, this results in tumors that are highly invasive and these are characterized by poorly cohesive growth or what is known as a single filing of tumor cells. This is a gene locus that encodes for P16, INC4A, and ARF, two tumor suppressor proteins mutated in familial melanomas. This is controlled by the CDK inhibitor, uh, CDKN2A. CDKN2A is one of the cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors, which helps regulate uh, the passage of cells through the cell, uh, through the cell cycle checkpoints. This, is, this encodes a ubiquitin ligase complex that is responsible for degradation of hypoxia-induced factors seen in sporadic renal cell carcinoma. This is the VHL gene, or the von Hippel-Landau gene. Aside from renal cell carcinomas, uh, mutations of the VHL gene also leads to the production of cerebellar hemangioblastomas and other vascular uh, malignancy is characterized by thin, uh, relatively immature, dilated capillaries because VHL is involved in um, the formation of blood vessels. This is a state of severe nutrient deficiency in which cells not only arrest their growth, but also cannibalize their own organelles. Proteins and membranes are carbon sources for energy production. This is an adaptive mechanism known as autophagy. 
These are tandem repeats of 1 to 6 nucleotides found throughout the genome, the lengths of which are normally relatively con constant. These are known as macrosatellites. And we have, when you have mutations known as macrosatellite instabilities, these are usually brought about by uh, mutations involving mismatch repair genes. This is an inherited loss of function mutation in nucleotide excision repair systems that leads to highly increased risk for, cell, uh, for skin cancers, particularly squamous cell and basal cell carcinomas. This is a condition known as seroderma pigmentosum. These are carcinogens that have highly reactive electrophile groups that directly damage DNA, leading to mutations and cancer. These are chemical carcinogens. These are, this is the mechanism by which UV radiation causes cancer. Formation of pyrimidin dimers. This is an HPV viral protein that inhibits P53, leading to increased cellular proliferation. It is the E6 HPV protein. This is the HPV viral protein that inhibits anti-proliferative activity of RB, leading to increased cellular growth. This is the E7 protein. Another important protein that is encoded by um, the HPV, uh, the human papilloma virus, especially for the low-risk variants, is the E4 protein. And the E4 protein is responsible for coilocytic atypia. We see coilocytic atypia, particularly in L-cell or low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions caused by low-risk HPVs. High-risk HPVs cause mutations of E6 and E7. For some reason, um, the expression of E6 and E7 proteins downregulates um, the formation of E4 protein. Therefore, in h cell, we no longer see the coilocytic atypia. This is a retrovirus that causes adult T-cell leukemia, HTLV1, or human T-cell lymphotrophic virus 1. This is a virus that is implicated in Burkitt's lymphoma, HIV-associated B-cell lymphomas, some, form of, some forms of Hodgkin lymphoma, and some nasopharyngeal malignancies. Epstein-Barr virus. This is the hepatitis virus that has the highest risk of causing hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatitis C. This is a gram-negative spiral-shaped bacterium implicated in gastric adenocarcinoma and extranodal marginal zone lymphoma, Helicobacter pylori. This is a tumor marker for medullary thyroid cancer, calcitonin. Calcitonin is secreted by the chief cells and is corrected and is and leads to the for to decreased levels of serum calcium. This is the tumor marker for pheochromocytoma. You have catecholamines and its metabolites, homovanillic acid and vanillyl mandelic acid. Serotonin, the metabolite of serotonin is 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid, which is usually found in the urine. It's measured in the urine and is found in carcinoid syndrome. These are telangiectasias that grow, that grow in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve associated with venous angiomas in the meninges, intellectual disabilities, seizures, hemiplegia, and skull radiopacities. This is the Sturge-Weber syndrome. What is the most common type of hemangioma? Capillary hemangiomas. Capillary hemangiomas are usually found in very young individuals and tend to regress over time. 
tumors of modified smooth muscle cells, usually found in distal fingers, and are, exqui and are exquisitely painful. These are known as glomus tumors, and depending on the amount of vascularity present, they can also be known as glomangiomas. They are usually found in the tips of the fingers and cause extreme pain. Glomus tumors may also be found in other soft tissues, in which case uh, pain is not a common presenting sim uh, symptom. These are composed of relatively round monomorphic cells. Uh, cytoplasmic borders are indistinct and they are characterized by thin dilated capillaries. They are said to arise from modified smooth muscle cells. In the case of glomus tumor, this, is, this arises from the glomus body, which regulates um, the blood vessels for, thermoregulate, for thermoregulation. This is the causative agent for bacillary angiomatosis the Bartonella family. This is a borderline vascular tumor caused by HHV8, Kaposi sarcoma. This is a locally aggressive tumor that in its endemic form is usually found in the African-American uh, population. Some forms are associated with HHV8 uh, these tumors are characterized by spindle cells that show moderate degrees of atypia. They tend to form slit-like spaces. This is a malignant vascular neoplasm seen as asymptomatic red papules or nodules that may progress to become large fleshy ma masses. They consist of plump atypical spindle cells with varying degrees of differentiation in forming vascular channels. These are known as angiosarcomas. This is an angiosarcoma that arises after prolonged lymphedema, usually seen in post-MRM um, and post-chemoradio uh, patients after, uh, after resection of breast cancers. This is known as Stuart-Treves syndrome. This is the most common primary tumor of the heart in adults. Atrial myxoma, usually left-sided. These are C anemone-shaped myxoid tumors, usually found in the semilunar valves. Papillary fibroelastomas. This is the most common primary heart tumor in children, rhabdomyomas. This, is the great, this presents the greatest risk factor for lung cancer, smoking. Tob tobacco smoking poses a higher risk for developing lung cancer than cigarette smoking. Currently, we do not have evidence as of yet whether vaping causes significant risk for the development of lung car carcinoma. What is the most common histologic type of lung cancer? Lung adenocarcinoma. In the previous editions of Robbins, um, there are conflicting statements saying that in lesser developed countries, the most common form is said to be squamous cell carcinoma. However, um, in newer editions of Robbins in Rosai and other um, lung subspecialty pathology books, um, it is unequivocally stated, uh, stated that the most common uh, subtype of lung cancer is now adenocarcinoma. What are the local regional predispositions of lung adenocea and squamous cell carcinoma? Adenocarcinomas tend to arise peripherally, while squamous cell carcinomas tend to arise from the hilum or are central in location. These are precursor lesions to adenocarcinoma, atypical adenomatous hyperplasia, and adenocarcinoma in situ. 
Adenocarcinoma in situ was previously known as bronchoalveolar carcinoma. Bronchoalveolar carcinoma is characterized by what is known as a lipidic growth or tumor cells that grow along the alveolar walls. Um, the lipidic pattern of growth is said to be non-invasive. What is the morphologic pattern of adenocarcinoma that does not have true invasion in more than 50% of the tumor mass and has the same prognosis as adenocarcinoma in situ or bronchoalveolar carcinoma? This is known as the lipidic pattern predominant adenocarcinoma. So more than 50% is said to be non-invasive or just grows along the walls of the alveolar linings. This is a lung malignancy characterized by small cells with scanned cytoplasm in distinct cell borders, speckled nuclear chromatin with a salt and pepper appearance. These are small cell carcinomas. When you have a chromatin pattern that is speckled or has a salt and pepper appearance, this usually tells us that the carcinoma arose from a neuroendocrine source. So these cells, regardless of where they come from, whether these are small cell neuroendocrine carcinomas or the, of the lungs, of the GI, or any other site, they are characterized by positivity in synaptophysin and chromoglanin. This is an apical lung malignancy, usually non-small cell, that causes Horner syndrome. This is known as Pankos tumor. And most of the tumors that cause this are typically adenocarcinomas because they are peripheral in location. Hypercalcemia is a paraneoplastic manifestation associated with what lung malignancy? Squamous cell carcinomas. Paraneoplastic syndromes are syndromes that are not directly related to the growth of the primary malignancy. In, in this particular case, um, squamous cell carcinomas for some reason lead to autocrine signaling leading to increased production of parathormone-related protein which leads to increased serum calcium levels. In contrast to the preceding question, hypocalcemia is associated with what lung malignancy? Medullary thyroid carcinoma because um, this secretes, these tumor cells are tumor cells of the chief cells that secrete calcitonin, decreasing calcium levels. Note that since calcitonin production is intrinsic to the medullary thyroid carcinoma cells, hypocalcemia is not a, considered to be a paraneoplastic syndrome. This is a pleural-based tumor composed of spindle cells arranged haphazardly in a patternless pattern with thin dilated blood vessels and varying amounts of interspersed collagen, and this is associated with what fusion gene? A patternless pattern uh, growth or haphazard growth of spindle cells usually found in the lungs but can also be found in other soft tissues is characteristic of solitary fibrous tumor. Solitary fibrous tumor is the new name for a group of entities that, was that used to be called hemangiopericytoma. That is, this is characterized by a NAB2 STAT6 fusion gene. Because this is characterized by a translocation, the cells that make up SFTs are typically relatively uh, monomorphic. They do not exhibit extensive atypia. Are mesotheliomas benign or malignant? This is a misnomer because mesothelio uh, mesotheliomas are always malignant. Mesothelioma is a rare tumor 
But when it does occur, this is associated with exposure to what substance? Asbestos. 95% of tumors of the head and neck belong to which histologic subtype? Squamous cell carcinomas. This is the most common mixed tumor of salivary glands composed of epithelial, myoepithelial, and mesenchymal components. This is known as pleomorphic adenoma. Its malignant, component, its malignant counterpart is the malignant mixed tumor of salivary glands, now more commonly known as carcinoma x pleomorphic adenoma. So in this picture, we can see the myoepithelial cells, ductal cells, and mesenchymal cells in the form of a chondromyxoid matrix. Near the center of um, this photo, we can see that the ductal, some of the ductal, ductal cells exhibit squamous metaplasia. This is the second most common salivary gland neoplasm composed of a double layer of cuboidal and columnar oncocytic cells surrounding aggregates of lymphoid tissue. This is known as Wharton's tumor. And when we say the cells are oncocytic, this is characterized by abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm as seen in the epithelial lining here. Wharton tumor is almost always found in people who smoke. What is the most common location of esophageal adenocarcinomas? They are usually found in the distal third of the esophagus, with the precursor lesion being intestinal metaplasia of the esophagus, also known as Barrett esophagus. What is, what is a requirement to make a diagnosis of Barrett esophagus? There must be endoscopic evidence of metaplastic columnar mucosa above the gastroesophageal junction, and you must exhibit incomplete intestinal metaplasia on histopathology. So incomplete intestinal metaplasia means that only some of the, cell, uh, only some of the esophageal cells show uh, metaplasia to intestinal type epithelium exhibiting goblet cells. When we say intestinal type metaplasia is complete, this means that all of the esophageal cells become converted to small intestinal type epithelium. And we can actually see on the, the microscope that these cells have villi like the intestinal cells of the small intestinal of the small intestine complete intestinal type metaplasia is not a precursor to esophageal adenocarcinoma only incomplete intestinal type or colonic type intestinal metaplasia predisposes one to adenocarcinoma of the esophagus what is the precursor lesion for squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus of the esophagus. Squamous dysplasia. And we characterize squamous dysplasia into low grade and high grade. There are several parameters used to differentiate between low grade and high grade dysplasia, but the most important factor is loss of polarization, which is seen only in high grade dysplasia. When the lower pole of the nucleus is no longer oriented to the basement membrane, uh, we call this loss of polarization, and we only we only see this in dysplasia that is high grade. What is the most common site of the of squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus? It is usually found in the middle third of the esophagus. The reason for this is that the middle third of the esophagus corresponds roughly to the air fluid junction in this area. So whenever caustic substances or substances that cause chronic irritation to the esophagus is taken in, 
there is usually a lag in the passage due to this air fluid interface. Therefore, it is in this area where uh, the, uh, the irritants cause um, a more prolonged uh, duration of irritation to the esophagus. What is the most common polyp in the stomach? Hyperplastic polyp. What is the most common malignancy of the stomach? Adenocarcinoma. What is the gene that is implicated in diffuse gastric ca cancer? CDH1 gene, which encodes for E. cadherin. E. cadherin, as mentioned, is responsible for intercellular adhesion. Therefore, diffuse gastric cancers are typified by single filing or poor cohesion of the carcinoma cells. In the latest WHO 5th edition for uh, gastrointestinal tumors, um, diffuse gastric cancers are now known as poorly cohesive carcinomas. And under poorly cohesive carcinomas of the stomach, we have the non-signet ring and the signet ring cell subtypes. What are the two common morphologic types of gastric adenocarcinoma? You have two subtypes, the diffuse gastric carcinoma, now known as poorly cohesive carcinomas, that arise from mutations of the CDH1 gene or the E-cadherin protein. And you have the intestinal type gastric adenocarcinoma arising from a pre-existing Barrett esophagus. What is the most common lymphoma of the stomach? Extranodal marginal zone lymphomas, colloquially known as maltomas, because they arise from mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue in the submucosa of uh, the stomach. Note that maltoma is not a histologic diagnosis. The proper term is extranodal marginal zone lymphoma. What is the most common mesenchymal neoplasm of the stomach? Most common mesenchymal neoplasm of the stomach are GIS or gastrointestinal stromal tumors. Note that GIS are particularly common in the stomach and the small intestine. You sometimes see them in the colon but not to the same uh, extent. Uh, when you have a spindle cell or mesenchymal neoplasm in the esophagus, the most common would be a lyomyoma. What are the most common mutations in GIST? These are gain-of-function mutations in CKIT or CD117. There is actually a contention. Be, uh, there is a contention behind where uh, gastrointestinal stu uh, stromal tumor cells come from. Um, classical literature say that they arise from the interstitial cells of Cajal or <clears throat> um, the pacemaker cells of the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, and the reasoning behind this is that interstitial cells of Cajal stain positively for CD117. However, um, in newer books, particularly in um, newer editions of Rosai and the WHO Blue Books, um, they, are call, uh, they are putting that into question because the nature of the mutation of CD117 in GIS is actually not the same uh, mechanism with regards to positivity of CD117 in the interstitial cells of Cajal. What is, uh, what are the Im useful immune histochemical stains for GIST? In a lot of cases, GIST exhibit a wide range of histomorphologic features. They can appear, uh, the, they can range in appearance from relatively bland spindle cells to highly atypical, and you can even see uh, GIST that are not spindle cells at all. They may have an epitheloid appearance, very similar uh, in histology to carcinomas. So to help us identify or diagnose GIS, 
we use two immunohistochemical stains. First is CKIT or CD117. However, there are some subtypes of GIS that are CD117 negative, in which case we use another stain known as DOG1, which is more sensitive to gastrointestinal stromal tumors. In fact, um, DOG1 um, is able to detect about 50% of CD117 negative uh, gastrointestinal stromal tumors. What is the most common malignancy of the GI tract? Adenocarcinoma of the colon. What are the two pathways involved in the development of colonic adenocarcinoma? First is the APC beta catenin pathway, which is due to disordered proliferation of the colonic epithelium, and the MSI pathway, which involves mutations of mismatch repair genes. We usually see this in syndromic uh, polyposis syndromes. This is a surgery correlate. Um, invasion of colonic adenocarcinoma through the muscularis propria into the pericolorectal soft, soft tissue is classified as PT3. What is the minimum number of polyps to make a diagnosis of familial adenomatous polyposis? 100. What is the risk of developing colorectal adenocarcinoma in a patient with FAP? 100%. In a lot of cases, patients with FAP undergo prophylactic colectomy or prophylactic hemicolectomy. What is the classic ROS finding in focal nodular hyperplasia of the liver? Central stellate scar. Another unrelated tumor that presents with a central stellate scar on ROS examination are oncocytomas of the kidney. What is the most common liver tumor in children? Hepatoblastomas. These are extrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas located at the junction of the right and left hepatic ducts. Clat skin tumors. What parasite is associated with cholangiocarcinoma? Clonorchis sinensis. What enzyme is deficient in hereditary leiomyomatosis and renal ca cell cancer syndrome? Fumarate hydratase. Hereditary leiomyomatosis and renal cell cancer syndrome is one of those syndromes that predispose one to the development of renal cell carcinoma. Another syndrome that can also present with increased risk for RCC is, v uh, is, the, is VHL or von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. This is a syndrome characterized by a constellation of skin tumors, pulmonary cysts, and renal tumors. berthog dube syndrome. What gene product is mutated in berthog dube syndrome? Folliculin. What is the most common histologic subtype of renal cell carcinoma? Clear cell carcinoma. These are characterized grossly by a, uh, a yellow appearance, and these tumors are highly hemorrhagic because these are very vascular tumors. Microscopically, they present with large cells with abundant, like uh, abundant cytoplasm that is vacuolated. What is the most common testicular tumor before three years old? Yolk sac tumor. This is a structure composed of a blood vessel surrounded by tumor cells arranged in visceral and parietal layers seen in yolk sac tumor. This is characterized by a glomeruloid appearance. These are known as schiller duval bodies. Sarcoma botyroides is histologically what type of tumor? Embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma. 
true or false, the slow grade squamous intraepithelial lesion eventually progress to high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion? Most of the time, they do not. L cells are caused by uh, low risk HPVs, while H cells are caused by high risk HPVs, usually HPV 16. Um, H cell has a high propensity towards progression to uh, cervical squamous cell carcinomas. What are morphologic features used for the identification of squamous intraepithelial lesions? There is nuclear enlargement, hyperchromasia, pleomorphism, and perinuclear halos. The presence of hyperchromasia and pleomorphism define atypia. For us to call uh, an, uh, a cell atypical, there must be hyperchromasia of the nucleus, the nucleus stains blue, much bluer than usual, and there is pleomorphism, or difference in size and shape of the nucleus and the cell. Perinuclear halos, or coilocytic atypia, is characteristic of L cell, but not in H cell. Coilocytic atypia is due to the E4 viral protein of low-risk HPV. We, do, we no longer see um, coilocytic atypia in high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions. This is a high-risk HPV most associated with squamous intraepithelial lesions, HPV-16. What is the most common subtype of cervical cancer? Squamous cell carcinoma. This is composed of nests and tongues of malignant squamous epithelium, whether keratinizing or non-keratinizing. Squamous cell carcinoma. This is a proliferation of malignant glandular endocervical epithelial cells with large hyperchromatic nuclei and mucin-depleted uh, mucin cytoplasm. Endocervical adenocarcinoma. The poorly differentiated um, endocervical adenocarcinomas will lose its ability to produce mucin because there is loss of differentiation. They no longer um, resemble normal endocervical glands, in which case it becomes very difficult to differentiate it from squamous cell carcinoma, in which case we will have to rely on immunohistochemical stains and very subtle um, histologic uh, signs. A superficially invasive squamous cell carcinoma belongs to what stage and how is it defined? Stromal invasion not deeper than 3 millimeters and no wider than 7 millimeters are defined as uh, superficially invasive squamous cell carcinomas of the cervix, and they are given the stage, stage 1A1. An endometrioid endometrial carcinoma with solid areas of 60%, not including areas showing squamous metaplasia, belongs to what FIGO grade? FIGO grade 3. Serous endometrial carcinomas usually arise from mutations of what gene? TP53, they are usually high-grade, and they closely resemble high-grade serous carcinomas of the ovary and fallopian tube. These are mixed epithelial tumors of the uterus composed of both malignant epithelial and mesenchymal components. Carcinoma or malignant mixed Mullerian tumor. The carcinoma component is usually endometrioid, while the sarcoma component can either be homologous in which it resembles uh, fibrosarcoma or heterologous in which it shows um, rhabdomyosarcoma-like, um, osteosarcoma-like, or chondrosarcoma-like features. All cystadenocarcinomas of the ovary arise primarily from what organ? 
serous carcinomas of the ovary, all serous carcinomas of the ovary are said to arise from the fallopian tube. Precursors of low-grade serous carcinoma of the ovary. These are intraepithelial um, carcinomas in the fallopian tubes known as sticks or serous tubal intraepithelial carcinomas. Note that um, these um, serous carcinomas of the ovaries all arise from tubal epithelium. Serous tumors of the ovary with increased complexity of the stromal papillae, stratification of the epithelium, and mild nuclear atypia, but invasion is absent. These are serous borderline tumors, and they are the intermediate forms of serous carcinomas and serous cystadenomas. These are ovarian tumors composed of malignant glandular epithelium with apical mucin, that exhibits either expansile or infiltrating invasion. Mucinous carcinomas. The, uh, those mucinous carcinomas exhibiting infiltrative growth tend to have a poor prognosis compared to those with expansile confluent growths. Ovarian tumors composed of sharply demarcated nests of epithelial cells resembling urothelium. Brenner tumors. Though rare, malignant transformation of a mature teratoma produces what kind of carcinoma? Squamous cell carcinoma. Please note that malignant transformation of a mature teratoma is different from an immature teratoma. Malignant transformation of a mature teratoma means that there is malignant uh, there is a malignancy arising from the mature components of a mature teratoma. Diagnosis of immature teratoma is based on the presence of what tissue? The presence of any immature tissue make, uh, makes the diagnosis of an immature teratoma. So whenever you see immature-looking cartilage, immature-looking um, hair follicles, these would make the tumor malignant. Grading of immature teratoma is based on the quantity of what type of tissue present? Neuroepithelium. So it is important that in order for us to make a diagnosis of immature teratoma, any immature tissue will do. But for grading, we have to base that on the most primitive component, which is neuroepithelium. What is the ovarian counterpart of seminoma? This germinoma. This is a structure composed of a central vessel surrounded by tumor cells within a space that is also surrounded by tumor. This is characteristic of the glomeruloid bodies of schiller duval schiller duval bodies are found in what tumor? Yolk sac tumors. What is the tumor marker for yolk sac tumors? Alpha fetoprotein. Note that alpha fetoprotein is also elevated in hepatocellular carcinomas. What is the other name for yolk sac tumors? They're also known as endodermal sinus tumors. These are small gland-like structures containing acidophilic material resembling immature follicles. Call exner bodies. Call exner bodies are found in what sex cord stromal tumor? Granulosa cell tumors. What is the molecular profile of medullary carcinoma of the breast? They are high-grade triple negative tumors. These are monotonous population of cells with discohesive growth. Lobular carcinoma, again characterized by mutations of CDH1 gene. What is the most common carcinoma of the breast? Invasive ductal carcinoma. 
This is a histologic subtype of breast carcinoma composed of well-formed angular tubules. They are often mistaken as benign tubular carcinoma, which are low-grade malignancies. This is a non-invasive ductal carcinoma that overexpresses HER2, apocrine carcinoma, and micropapillary carcinoma. So these are um, HER2 enriched um, histologic subtypes of breast cancer, and they typically respond to HER2 antagonists. What is the most common benign tumor of the breast? The fibroepithelial lesion known as fibroadenoma. So we have two types of fibroepithelial lesions. Fibroadenomas, which are typically found in younger individuals, characterized by the proliferation of the fibros and the adenomatous or glandular components. And philodis tumor, which, is, which are found in relatively older individuals, characterized by the, uh, by the proliferation of the stromal or mesenchymal component. What is the most common cause of hyperpituitarism? Pituitary adenoma, they are usually cellar in location. What feature is required for the diagnosis of papillary thyroid carcinoma? A. The nuclear features. These features exhibit clearing, which gives it the name orphan anin nucleus. Nuclei of papillary thyroid carcinomas also tend to have a grooved appearance or a coffee bean appearance. Note that the presence of a papillary architecture is not needed to make a diagnosis of papillary thyroid carcinoma. It is the nuclear features that make PTC PTC. What feature is necessary to make a diagnosis of follicular carcinoma of the thyroid? Capsular invasion. If you just look at the cells, you cannot differentiate follicular carcinoma from a follicular adenoma. So you will have to sample the entire capsule of the tumor and determine whether or not there is capsular invasion, to call it follicular carcinomas. Note that follicular carcinomas are characterized by their high rates of metastasis and lymphovascular space invasion. What is a tumor marker for medullary carcinoma of the thyroid? Calcitonin. What is the characteristic architecture of phaeocopocytoma? These are characterized by the presence of balls and nests of tumor cells, also known as the Zelbolen appearance. This is a skin tumor that is described as the Great Bimmerker. Melanomas. Melanomas can exhibit a wide variety of appearances. Some of them may appear epitheloid, like a carcinoma. Some of them may appear spindle cells, like uh, a sarcoma. While most melanomas typically present with pigments called melanin, you also have forms of melanoma that do not produce melanin. We call them amelanotic melanomas. What translocation is the hallmark of the FSP or dermatofibroma sarco dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans? Call 1A1, PDGFB translocation. Because this is a translocation sarcoma, this is a locally invasive tumor. It is malignant. And however, the cells tend to have a uniform spindle shape appearance. We see them in younger individuals. What is the most common primary malignant tumor of the bone? Osteosarcoma, usually arising from the metaphysis. Most common site of osteosarcomas would be the distal femur and the proximal tibia. What syndromes are associated with chondromas? Oyer disease and Mafuchi syndrome. This is a malignant bone tumor characterized by primitive round cells without differentiation. You have Ewing sarcoma. 
Ewing sarcoma is characterized by very primitive looking cells that exhibit molding or um, cells that conform in shape to the nearby cells. They are CD99 positive, CD99 positive. They exhibit strong membranous staining. Ewing sarcoma tend to arise in the diaphysis. What gene product is, lo is lost with mutations of NF2? Merlin. Where are Viroke bodies usually found in schwannomas? Viroke bodies are usually found in Anthony A bodies. Schwannomas are tumors of Schwannian differentiation and they, have, they are characterized by a palisading arrangement or organ, uh, organoid um, architecture. There are hypercellular areas known as Anthony A and hypocellular areas known as Anthony B. Note that Verroche bodies are usually located in Anthony A bodies. We find um, schwannomas usually within the location, within the vicinity of large nerves but we also see them in soft tissue and even in the gastrointestinal tract. Gastrointestinal tract schwannomas usually do not present with Anthony A and Anthony B arrangement of the Schwannian cells. What feature distinguishes glioblastoma from astrocytic tumors of lower grade? Glioblastoma, also known as GBM, formerly known as glioblastoma multiforme, is a very high-grade um, tumor of astrocytic differentiation. We give them um, a WHO grade 4, which is the highest WHO grade. Um, they are characterized by the presence of microvascular proliferation, and these are... Um, proliferation of the endothelial cells of the blood vessel. It is important to note that just because a tumor, a, C a brain tumor or, a or an astrocytic tumor is vascular does not necessarily mean that there is microvascular proliferation. The term microvascular proliferation is specific to the hyperplasia of the endothelial lining of the blood vessels, giving it a glomeruloid appearance or like a glomerulus of the kidneys. Not all vascular tumors actually present with microvascular proliferation. This is a highly primitive WHO grade 4 tumor, usually found in children. These are known as med medulloblastomas. They are characterized by positivity with synaptophysin. Thank you very much for listening. Good luck with the board exams. Thank you.